okay this is a this this introduction to linear algebra is very very basic only for you people to get through the idea of uh, co uh, correlation and covariance okay but uh, i'm going to be doing a, a full linear algebra introduction don't worry about that why because it, it is required when we do support vector machines okay so that whole thing depends on you understanding the linear transformations but right now i'm just going to give you an idea of what is algebra and how there are different dimensions when i say different dimensions these are the different dimensions these these are the dimensions what i'm talking about these dimensions where if you if you have just one variable just single dimension and that's why it will it will just fit on this this value here okay this is the single dimension the moment you have salary so you want to see the relationship between age and salary so you would want the second dimension the moment you have experience number of years is also moving moving uh, value a uh, salary is also in time series age is also in time in terms of uh, series so now you need another dimension okay so which probably would just be for me i'm going to draw it in yellow okay let's call it set so this one actually moves like this now there is a z plus and a z minus and this actually is a 3d space now i hope you you are able to imagine it's 3d space next time onwards i'll actually bring a a 3d uh, uh, space let's let's see i have uh, i'm getting that finding that software uh, license and if i get that then i'll be able to show the whole thing in 3d real 3d which you'll sort of appreciate better but here's the gist <coughs> now when you have a certain value over here it just gets plotted it just gets plotted as uh, let's say you have um, blue let's say you have an age of 12 12 is hardly an age to work okay let's say you have an age of 22 and you have a salary of uh, 20k and you have an experience of 2 you have another uh, value let's say 28 you have a salary of uh, 80k and you have experience of 8 all of this now we choose let's say in for this example we choose let's put uh, age on x y on uh, salary on y and uh, experience on z so for a certain value of x for a certain value of age we have a certain value of salary and we have a certain value of experience okay all together actually make a three dimensional point somewhere i i cannot even i, I when i draw this dot here just imaginary dot here it this dot is not in in plus or minus uh, plus comma minus quadrant okay it is not in the quadrant of x comma y it is actually in the quadrant of x y z it's a three dimensional uh, representation but for our our sake let's only take the two dimensional representation let's not um, get confused with z okay let's only take this one so when you have more and more dimensions you require more and more quadrants but in in our case in uh, our case when we do any representation 3d is the maximum thing we can draw you can imagine after that you cannot imagine so the problem was uh, no how do you deal with the, how do you quantify how do you do a math develop a math to um, deal with uh, dimensions which uh, require these kind of things and how do you how do you see how these things are growing so that gave rise gave rise to linear algebra what they do is every vector that is being projected from the mean here let's say there is um, for a particular value of this one and this one there is one one value i said right between uh, let's say this is uh, uh, salary and let's say this is age and you have um, let's linearize this two dimensional vector this two dimensional problem into a, a, a single uh, linear problem so for an age x of something you have salary so you got a point here after that you have um 
another value of age so you get another salary so you have a point let me use yellow for that this is another point this is another point this is another point right let's we have this they what they what what is done in linearization is every information be it any kind of dimension they want it it helps us to put all of this information on a single number line with the help of a unit vector so it's just like uh, expressing all the variations in terms of how much it is different or how many unit vectors took for it to reach here what is the whole thing here how much of the change in x led to how much of the change in y this point tells that story this point tells the story of this much if it moves in age this much it will move in salary right so you with the help of a unit vector which is called u cap we let's say how we try to describe in pdf um, uh, uh, two times standard deviations and one times and you know we created the new concept of standard deviation and started expressing the probability distribution in terms of the standard deviation right same way we use a we use the help of unit vectors and we try to express this entire distribution the drifts by taking its projection on the on a single dimension so now we have this whatever this value here is we'll project it and we express this difference in terms of a unit vector that is whatever the scale is here in whatever scale you imagine x to be the unit vector with the magnitude 1 for that particular scale is created and then after that you will see how much there is a uh, difference between this and every time if there is a standardized difference between this growth that is expressed using your actual whatever i tell you you know in terms of uh, punishing the theta variable weights right so these weights you you start envisioning these weights and the combination of the unit vector the weights and the dimension actual value of the dimension together the whole of your multi dimensional problem is linearized okay this is a very lame explanation i am going to solve this problems uh, completely see show you how this whole thing actually uh, transforms but this is not the time so i just wanted to tell you that same way what we do is when uh, you have an x and you have a y so each one of these values are giving us a drift of uh, the uh, the present phenomena and when we do that let's say in this particular case <coughs> we were discussing about how you think of the data sets as two uh, for the two variables as high dimensional vectors convert these vectors of Uh, uh, convert these two vectors of variances from the mean so that whole vector what you saw it just gets converted to vectors of the variances from the mean okay and then that's it you calculate the variance for it okay and then you take the dot product that is the cosine of the angle between them so whatever that variance is in that field uh, whatever the variance was for this and whatever the variance was for this for y whatever the variance was for the x and y from the origin put a create a vector for uh, the mean of the x and from the origin put a vector for the mean of the y okay and then calculate the cos of it like get the dot product of it which is nothing but the cosine of the angle between them so dot product between the vector of the variance of x let's say this is uh, x variance and let's say this is the y variance so how the x and y variance first of all you got a vector in what direction it is moving so you're getting that direction and to express its actual sort of uh, uh you know uh, whether they are like to to actually put a number to whether they are growing together or not or if they are growing away to put a number to it you take a cos of it 
okay how they uh, understood whether to take a cause of it is a different story because the idea of linearization or linear algebra and all this came first and after that people started expressing this entire data science in terms of linear algebra and then they found it out it's a big story okay but we uh, if you want all these things then you read those sci-fi uh, introductory not sci-fi these um, uh, there are certain books which are neither mathematics textbooks nor they are sci-fi novels they're in between them um uh, they write this um, simon singh and all these people write amazing books on for layman science for layman maths for layman right so in that all of this beautiful stuff is explained i'll suggest some books you'll be able to follow it but the idea is you take the dot product um between them and that dot product when you uh, take a dot of these two it is nothing but that multiply the dimension of whatever a and b that hello is. hello yeah what happened hello yeah hello am i am i audible guys yes yeah, audible. and the screen is visible yes yes i just shifted from i've been shifting from screen to screen which screen am i on now the one note yeah you're on the, you're on the notepad yeah okay. I'm on one note and uh, not here. And now I shifted to my PPT, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. So whatever the you know variance we calculate that into this both the variances and the cos of it. So let's figure this out. Um what is what is cos of 0? Anyone? Cos one. of zero is one. Yeah, one. Cos of zero is one. Cos of ninety is zero. Cos zero. of one eighty is um one. I, uh, I think it's also one. Minus one. Negative. Minus one. Yeah. So now you're understanding if your variance of x. and the variance of y are making angle which is close to zero which is close to zero what happens to it you get a positive number isn't it because it is giving you it is getting closer as x moves y is also moving same direction it's a positive number because you don't forget that it is also the multiplication of a and b it is also the multiplication of a and b whatever the variance of x whatever the variance of y into the cos of the angle between them so if this angle decreases what happens it means that age and salary are moving in the same direction because you are almost getting the same variances over here it's still the same so the vector between that the difference the angle between the vectors are almost closing on to zero so what happens to the cos of zero it is 1 so it is you're directly left with this value if it is something like this one value is increasing and another value is equally decreasing if it is moving in the negative there are so many things so many phenomena which actually does that something increases and something decreases for example in this corona pandemic time let's say um you have a uh, number of vaccinations as it increases the number of uh, cases decreases now what should be the correlation between them negative or uh, positive negative correlation negative what about um, something like a uh, a salary of a person and uh, salary of your parents <laughs> nice thing right salary of a certain person and the salary of their parents 
okay if you plot these two you would get something like one thing is here another thing is here there is difference of 90 degrees which is zero so when you are closing on when it is when the phenomena both vectors are moving towards 90 degrees you're actually seeing zero correlation zero correlation between them okay so here what we are doing is still calculating the covariance i'll tell you how correlation comes out of it because i have discussed i have shown you this right now we cal took the variance from the mean of a took the variance of the mean of b and did a dot product which is nothing but its product into the cos of the angle which is b which these two are making that's your covariance value so take the dot product and then of course divide by the sample size and then you get the covariance value so how do you interpret covariance so that's what i explained now we are summarizing it a small covariance close to zero means there isn't much correlation between the two variables a large covariance that is far from zero could be negative or inverse relationship means there is a correlation but the question is how large is the covariance okay you got some value but the question is how large is it so for that we uh, have the term called correlation so when you divide the covariances by the standard deviations of both the variables you get a covariance value let's say a b and cos theta take the magnitude take the magnitude multiply it and then multiply it by the cos of the this one you get some value n okay now n is some value c this value uh, of course you have to divide by the sample size of it after you get the covariance you have to take the covariance value and divide it by the standard deviations of both okay so you divide it by the standard deviations of both std of both a and the standard deviation of b then you will automatically get a number between minus 1 and 1 it can be anything it means maximum it will be minus 1 um, maximum 1 or most minimum it will be minus 1 maximum it will be 1 always it is going to end up like this we'll see that now now that you've understood it we'll see that hello but, yeah yeah rahul hello rahul yes hello rahul Rahul. Okay. Okay, <coughs> YouTube is playing. I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'll continue with the class. Okay. Now, this is important before I go to that. Remember this. Correlation operation is performed on a set of variables. And not on a single variable. Okay. This one you have, you already understood. It does not imply causal relationships between an event and the result so important understand this it is not saying the moment you said something like uh, cor co uh, correlation coefficient is let's say closing to 0 0.98 so it means that between let's say x and y two two different uh, variables you get a correlation coefficient of 0 0.98 let's say this is so close to one it means that x is varying with y and it is closely varying with y means there is some kind of relationship but it does not mean that 
बिकॉज एक्स हैपेंड वाई इज हैपनिंग इट डजेंट मीन दैट इट दे आर इन डिपेंडेंट फिनोमिना इट्स इट्स लाइक इट्स लाइक एज एंड सैलरी अंडरस्टैंड दिस एज एंड सैलरी एक्चुअली फॉर अ गिवन सेट ऑफ दिस वन फॉर अ रेंज लेट से फ्रॉम द एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फोर्टी इफ यू प्लॉट दिस एज द नंबर मूव फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फोर्टी फॉर अ पर्टिक्युलर डोमेन लेट से सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग एंड यू प्लॉट ऑल द सैलरीज यूल एक्चुअली गेट एंड अप विद अ को रिलेशन लाइक दिस बिकॉज एज यू मूव योर सैलरी इंक्रीजेस बट दैट डजेंट मीन that it is the age which is giving you the salary okay it just so happens that it has a positive correlation linearly positive correlation but it doesn't imply causal relationship causal means cause and effect causal cause it doesn't say that because your age is increasing that's why your salary is increasing. it doesn't mean that otherwise you could have just you can simply bring any person from any other domain or simply a, some some person who's not at all uh, you know uh, into the uh, software engineering somebody with an age of 35 and if it if it would imply that you will simply bring somebody from the age of 35 and say give them give, give that person so much salary because sort of you you thought that it is 0.98 so it will work right it doesn't work so it is only showing you how two things are moving but it doesn't mean causal relationship don't make that assumption ever okay so a correlation is for the set of results and its value shows how all three results are changing with respect to the event if correlation is tending to zero it is less to behave similarly if correlation of a set values are tending to minus 1 then they are behaving inversely proportional both of both getting towards one and getting away from one are both valuable because both are good information if one thing moves with one another thing it's good one thing actually moves equally in in uh, proportionality it is moving in the other direction that also is good information hello okay Okay now let's actually go and check out some Do we have it? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be sort of a quick introduction and quick quick finishing because there is nothing much here. Uh, some um, uh, same we are going to create like last time we're going to create some dummy data. and we're going to hard code everything that we have learned just now and uh, we'll also check out how we can use some other standard uh, uh, packages to directly create uh, uh, calculate all this stuff uh, but we are going to start with first defining something in this example particular example we have taken the example of uh, um, uh, checking out how two things are moving the one for example we have an e-commerce company okay an example an e-commerce company and they are interested in finding a correlation between page speed and Hello? how much a customer spends okay page speeds and how much a customer spends and let me tell him that uh, he will hey video i can hear you now finally okay okay great man yep and see you okay so general fyi do not have html5 disabled okay <laughs> okay All right. Um, so let's get this example. What we have here is the relationship. We are trying to find out if there is any correlation or covariance between two phenomena. What is that? How fast the page loads and how much a customer spends. Okay. <laughs> For example, I'll give you a funny thing that happens with this because after I started doing this. I realized my my present website loads very slow, so my team projected that sir, if this is the way, then uh, the spending on our website is going to be very less. So we completely uh, change. We are completely changing our web technologies too, 
react so that we actually see that okay this is a real real thing okay for example you take this uh, example if you have two apps or you're surfing on uh, let's say amazon and uh, some other xyz um, shopping website if amazon is quickly loading everything you click there's a photo you click there is a checkout page you click there is there are options right that that inherently gives you that feeling that something is right the technology is good they're really they are really sort of putting the whole thing out there and um, have made the effort and the uh, organized uh, way of dealing with these web pages that's the reason why it is loading fast right so it's, it's sort of you'd spend you'd you would actually be confident of spending so this experiment here is just about that so we'll instead of uh, getting that kind of uh, data we will just create that kind of dummy data it's very interesting just check out how we will just create that data and while we create we will also learn about some new packages we'll also learn about functions how we have created it and stuff uh, right now it might be looking sort of thing but let me as i start reading this line into it you'll be like very comfortable import numpy as np because of course we need to use num mp uh, a lot and uh, from pylab a new package a new uh, thing that is being introduced introduced here from pylab import star star when we say star it automatic from pylab actually gives you many um, uh, uh, you know sub modules like uh, calculating averages calculating absolute values uh, you know squares uh, square roots and stuff okay uh, but uh, instead of us asking uh, pylab uh, or python to um, import only a few specific things maybe sometimes you know you'll not be able to remember what all is required so you simply put star so in this particular instance it has now imported everything okay it's imported everything uh, that pylab has to offer and at some point of time we're going to use that in the code so vijay quick question huh. is there any difference between just saying import pylab versus doing this pylab import star how will you say import pylab what just like you, the previous line says import numpy as np okay can and the next line say import pylab as p1 okay this one i have never uh, thought about it okay so i'll get back to this okay i also okay. never but uh, i i don't see why uh, the knowing that answer would ever sort of give me anything so it is for us it is just okay this is how it is done so we'll yeah, just put it yeah to be yeah okay so uh, import numpy as np from pylab import star and uh, let's do what we just uh, described here that's what we are going to be doing whatever we did here whatever we described here like calculating the covariance of that's what we'll be doing here okay so what do we need in terms of your thinking what do you need you know that there is going to be some vector some vector which is going to contain a series of numbers which represents how fast the page is loading some other vector which contains series of numbers which represents how much the person spent simple simple example one vector which contains some seconds because speed of the page how will it represent 20 seconds 12 seconds 13 seconds some numbers and how will you represent how much customer spends if it is in uh, uh, you know rupees then you'll have a certain scale like 5000 10000 12000 whatever number if it is in dollars then according to that there will be dollars uh, $20 $40 $80 doesn't matter but don't mix two scales don't mix two different scalings okay with with that in mind i'm definitely when the data comes to you it will be proper with that in mind let's figure out how we do this thing so what we did here we first we have to calculate the mean and then to calculate the variance we do the we take the mean value and divide, we can, we can do it with both mean and variance so it doesn't really uh, you know give you that kind of a change we'll just go with the mean using the mean how do you calculate mean define we are doing we could have calculated it directly by getting the this one but we need to calculate the mean of all the x means given the full list of whatever the x value has we need to calculate or create a new vector which is the difference between the mean and that value so x mean 
is mean of x so you get one number so whatever the entire string let's say you sent the entire string which contains the page speeds we will hold it in this vector this this list and we'll calculate the list uh, the mean of that list and we have it in x mean now for every value in that in this every value in that list we are going to calculate what is the difference of that number with the mean so that is actually the difference from the mean okay so we get this here xi return xi minus x mean xi minus x mean for xi in x so when it iterates when you see for loop it will iterate through all the numbers in x and every time it comes inside the loop it is going to subtract that particular value from the mean of that distribution and create a new list and return it that's what this does okay so with that in mind we know that we are going to get those differences from the mean we know we will get it so now we are going to calculate the covariance that how we discussed over there is take the dot product of the differences from the mean and divide by the sample size we could have done it as n but in this case very generic case we do it by n minus 1 because it is a we sort of assume that we would have taken a sample out of that okay you can do it with n also you can do it by n minus 1 also ideally you given a population you take a sample and that whole thing is working on the sample and uh, after that you do the estimation for the population but let's let's just understand the simple uh, example okay so our two functions are ready for us to use done okay one calculates the actual calculation is actually what covariance but why did we do this why did we do write another function because to calculate covariance we need the difference from the mean we need the difference for each we need a vector which shows the difference from the mean okay that's why we have difference from the mean of x difference from the mean of y and the dot product of that divided by the its sample size okay after that we are supposed to get one number let's see now we don't have page speeds purchase amounts you can do it i will give you an assignment right now take this right now note it down go to worldometer okay and take any two variables over there and check the covariance and correlation number in your case you will actually have to hand code it you will have to actually copy some list of numbers and put it here another list of numbers put it here and then check for it but here in our case we will do our magic thing just randomly generate some numbers and we're going to put it we'll we're going to generate it in terms of uh, you know let's say it is a, it has a normal distribution which is safe to assume so page speeds we're going to create some thousand numbers okay how we will say um let the maximum page speed be 3 seconds and ha and the page speed standard deviation could be 1 so we'll get a lot of thousand numbers which is between uh, 3 and uh, all this uh, you know uh, depending on whatever the standard deviation is so this is a mean sorry i'm sorry it's not a maximum it is a mean page speed okay so you will have maximum depending on how many standard deviations it moves away from okay so purchase amount also we're going to do something like that but in terms of okay this is in uh, let's say uh, dollars so 50 dollar is the mean value that is spent and 10 dollars is the standard deviation give me 1000 values so now page speed and purchase amount both are lists containing 1000 numbers each i hope you understood how we created it now what do you do you scatter it okay you scatter those numbers because they're all randomly normal of course you will see that because in between there is so much of concentration and as you move out there is it gets sparse and that's what happens in a in a in a normal distribution isn't it right so you call for covariance what is this this is a function we wrote here which required 
to be uh, deem uh, the uh, mean to be calculated so we wrote the function for that also we could have directly used this we could have directly used a simple np dot correlation coefficient between this and it will give you an answer but we take some you know because we didn't do a full python introduction right so we always take this chance where we go back and we're able to write functions so that you guys understand this is how you do it this is how the whole thing comes out now we calculate the covariance between it and uh, it's saying it's minus 0 0.026 right so absolutely that's like it's neither moving towards totally minus one nor it is moving towards uh, uh, you know uh, one it is sort of drifting here like it, it doesn't it, it me it is true because what is there any correlation between these two values no but what if we relate we what if we create a relationship between page speed and purchase amount just for an experiment how do you create a relationship between page speed and purchase amount in a random uh, scenario so we just do let's say we define a new um, this one we say per let purchase amount be equal to a certain the same way but let it be also divided by page speeds so we are sort of giving it a dependency so we have created a random purchase amount list as if it is related to page speeds this was the earlier purchase amount which is totally random but this is a new list which has some relationship with the page speeds some relationship you can multiply it you can divide minus do some relationship okay so we got that relationship just so that you understand what if there is a relationship so that right what if if it actually is a relationship what happens so you scatter that page speed pair purchase amount you get this scatter plot okay and then you calculate the covariance so it is sort of moving towards some negative number it is actually strongly uh, negative so one thing uh, moves up other thing moves down so what is moving up it is like this if 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 your page speed becomes less see this if your page speed becomes less your spending becomes more so that's what we established here you see the graph six seconds of page speed too late maximum maximum we can expect ten dollars sale as a pay speed decreases your spending increases and this is this is reality this happens actually you go to and check with any a b testing uh, this one you will see that a b testers they do that when they add too many different kinds of uh, uh, you know uh, high definition pictures and stuff and they want to sort of give people a very good um, experience of high definition pictures as well and also uh, ui and uh, usability and user experience and stuff uh, so they do this test and one of the tests is found true now calculating the correlation correlation calculation is very simple you have covariance and as we said we just divide by the uh, standard deviations of both okay so take the correlation quote uh, take the covariance value covariance x comma y divide by standard deviation x standard deviation y you get one number okay now this is your number it's always going to be between 1 and minus 1 now the question to think about is how did it how is it that every time you divide you you get different different co covariance numbers over here but what happens to it when you divide it by its standard deviations why does it always lie between 1 and minus 1 so the answer to that is sort of you know getting to the idea of what division is so when you sort of uh, uh, just a moment and uh, just a moment just give me a moment is that because you are normalizing it to the mean in a certain way i just Yeah, let me uh, explain that. So you're saying what, Rahul? Because normalizing? 
because you are normalizing every time you divide it by standard deviation you are effectively kind of normalizing it towards the mean so every plus mean is kind of the center you can only go plus 1 minus 1 of it mm. nah i didn't explain it right i i that's what i wanted to tell you i think you get the feeling but uh, uh, yeah, the whole yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So after I give you this example, probably you'll get. Let's say you divide twelve by four. Actually, I should pour that. Please, please, please. 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 So what is this whole idea of dividing 12 by 4? What are you trying to get? You get the number 3. Right? So what is this 3 in in terms of it is how many how many fours are there in this number? That is 3. You you take 25 by 5. You get 5. It says this many fives are there in this number so when you have a covariance value and you divided by standard deviations of x and standard deviations of y it is saying these many standard deviations are there in the value that was expressed so that's the reason why you'll always end up with a number between 1 and minus 1 because it is actually giving you that drift and this is how much these are the number of uh, standard deviations for uh, both the dimensions because it is about both the dimensions you actually do this okay this is just a just a feel to give you a feel of what is happening over there right so we get this co uh, covariance we calculate it we get the correlation we uh, get this number okay and if you calculate the same correlation without doing this without doing establishing a relationship you will not get this correlation value you will get very less you could have done that correlation um, experimentation with np dot cor cof which np is giving you between any two vectors any two lists i'll be calling vectors now because we should we need to sort of get comfortable with the idea of calling your entire lists as vectors and vectors are represented as lists only here okay so these two vectors just as if it is x comma y instead of you plotting or getting something uh, in a different way just call for np dot correlation coefficient and get this thing done you will actually get answer not like this but you'll get an array back what is it meaning array means it has now it is going to, it is matrix okay that's why i'm telling it is matrix multiplication there is a there is a very strong relationship between matrix and linear algebra the whole idea we learned matrix is so that in future linear algebra is very easy for you and in all of engineering linear algebra i didn't realize this when i was actually doing my uh, i i did but it was sort of hard stuff because the memtech in my memtech was in astronomy and space engineering it was all about space physics Okay, everything we start our day starts with three dimensions, and all two body problem, three body problem. So when all they used to use a different kind of linear algebra transformations, uh, it was taught to me as if it is just a subject, but not as a relationship between the physical world and its uh, higher dimensional representation. It wasn't the story wasn't connected. It got connected to me when I started doing this, but I would love to go back now and read it. read the entire thing back as if uh, now with the knowledge that i know now right so anyway the, the idea is that so your answer is getting you are getting the answer back as a array because that's what it is designed to calculate give two vectors to it first it calculates the correlation of page speed with itself so that answer is 1 then it calculates the correlation of the page speeds with purchase amount that answer is this much then it will calculate the correlation of purchase amount with page speeds that answer is this then it will calculate the correlation of purchase amount with itself again that answer is this so it makes sense correct 
now let's sort of get another um, relationship in so you will know prove it sort of you know you are you are getting this minus 1 and 1 and all right uh, you you are getting this minus 0 0.7 and all right so let's get this new relationship what did we do earlier we took purchase amount is equal to some um, uh, the uh, you know randomly generated vector in divided by page speed that's what we did now what we do is we create purchase amount as a direct relationship with page speeds and it looks like this we say 100 minus page speed into 3 now when you scatter that doing the page speed and purchase amount and you find the correlation between that you get a minus 1 because you introduce the relationship in such a way that it is actually now increasing like this directly or inversely linearly inversely correlated why is it like that because your this particular equation here whatever you're seeing is nothing but y is equal to mx plus c y is equal to mx plus c just so happens that your plus c is nothing but minus minus 100 that's it okay so now if i want a positive of it i would just replace this by plus and run it so i get a positive from it will go like this so we have we have introduced a wrong relationship here which is saying that as the page speeds increases the spending increases which is wrong okay we should, we cannot do that but this is our dummy data so we can introduce anything right so i hope you get the uh, the idea so when i do this when i do the plus and i run it what it is telling me it is telling me that the correlationship is totally i mean positive something increases the other thing absolutely increases with it without any hint of doubt it is increasing that's what one is telling you if i do the ulta of it it's saying it is minus one as something increases the other thing is proportionately without any disturbance or noise decreasing when we did a relationship like this divide by page speeds it gave a correlation coefficient of minus 0 0.57 which is sort of a number but it won't actually tell you that this is like this okay that uh, PDF with the correlation value you will get it the probability density function of this if you see it will be like an exponential PDF then you will see a correlation then you will see sort of a skew of it you know how it is skewing it is uh, negatively skewed or positively skewed it is positively skewed and what is the kurtosis the tail and this one all of that when you calculate and the correlation then you will have a lot of things to say about this phenomenon so I guess you understand now correlation is this one how things to two things vary with each other and how correlation can be used for different different stuff so I think uh, this is where we will end this class today and uh, the recording of the same will be sent to you but the assignment for today is yesterday also you have some assignment today also you should have the same what was the assignment yesterday okay. <coughs> think about what can you find a correlation between because any uh, there are so many other assignments uh, which we can actually uh, you know sort of uh, do but this is more interesting because this value actually we can discuss total cases and total recovered is there any of course there will be see if there is any correlation between um, yeah see if there is any correlation between population and uh, critical value uh, sorry um, 
uh, between uh, deaths. Can you find that out? Population and between death for the first 20 countries. How do you ca copy a whole of this? You can copy the whole of this into Excel sheet. Copy. There is a way. Okay, you can copy the whole thing. Find that out. It's a very interesting way. That's it. I didn't know it was so easy. I thought there's another process for it. Okay, so we've got everything. So you know the labels, put the labels and uh, see how you will take this whole thing copy and probably paste it as a comma separated value and make it a list and check out what is the correlationship between population and uh, number of deaths. All right. Okay, so with that, we'll end this class today. Any questions, please let me know. Hey, Vijay, thank you. This was very valuable. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you scroll up to that uh, function definition which you wrote? The def mean, d mean, and d, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, here, so basically what you're doing is you are calling uh, where is that where is that yeah that in the covariance function hmm. you are calling d mean for x and d mean for y hmm. dot of it we are doing a dot product yeah yeah, yeah. dot product is fine my my question is uh we are it's a difference from the mean yes got it Okay. It's a difference from the right. not the mean actually. Okay. okay. So this difference, difference from the mean which we get can also be represented as how many standard deviation away it is if we choose to do that. If we want to cleanse this data, then we will put a filter on the difference from the mean and say if it is more than two standard deviations away, do not consider it. I mean, you want to filter it. Yeah. Yeah. If okay. But right. difference more from the mean is just uh, that calculation which is used to um, actually find out your variance. This yes. is what gets yes. squared and uh, when you square it and divide it by its sample size, you actually get the variance. Variance. And the square and root of the variance is, of the, is the standard deviation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So because of that, you will actually are ending up whenever you divide by standard deviations, you are getting how many standard deviations are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. So it is that feel. Okay. So, uh, oh. so yeah, the, we had talked about how many standard deviations away something is. So assuming I have calculated my uh, variance and then I have a, a, a standard deviation value. Okay. Now if I want to find out, so if I have a 10 element array and I have a standard deviation X, and each element there is n1 to n9, yeah, n1 to n10. So basically, when I want to find out how many standard deviations away something is, I will do n1 minus mean, or mean minus n1, bod of that, and then divide that by standard deviation, right? Mm, so whenever to... we say that a certain value is this much standard deviation away from something, we always mean that it is this much standard deviation away from the mean, right? I mean, away from what is what we need to calculate. No, standard right? deviation itself means this is how much it is away from the mean. Because standard deviation got calculated by its different by square mean. difference from the mean. It's right. a square difference so, from the mean. Huh. So when you were doing two sigma away, three sigma away. Yeah. So how do we can you just say that one like can you just explain that one more time because i always thought that you had taken given that an array of you know values okay uh one two three four five like bare minimum values uh yeah that's the norm, normal distribution yeah and what it says in First sigma and minus one sigma, you have 
how many percent 34 percent 34 percent you have 12.6 or something yeah here you have around 6.1 percent or something here you have one point something so this is first this is plus two plus three plus four mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so when we say everything about two everything above two standard deviations the mm -hmm. probability of this one occurring is so less that mm -hmm. we cannot build a model on it because the pdf itself says that probability of that occurring is so less how can you put that in a how can you put those values when you're trying to build model is it obvious now you are trying to build a prediction model that prediction model is nothing but relationship between uh, all the variables and you're finding that right. relationship using all this covariance now you understood now you can put the story together but while right. cleaning no, the I, data you're I, cleaning everything hmm. about two standard deviations because if it is about two standard deviations your your curve is going to get uh, biased it is going to get no yeah i totally understand that that is not my question mine is more of a more of a procedure question hmm. so if you just have a simple array of three four elements and you took a standard deviation or you okay. calculated the standard deviation of that okay right and then uh, uh then you are calculating how how much away from standard deviation each of the element is now how do you calculate standard deviation first you take the mean of this value yes how do you calculate the standard deviation of this x take the x you, bar uh, you take the x bar mean yes okay you get four okay mm -hmm. so then you take x minus x bar that mm -hmm. is minus three zero one one zero zero yeah so you get all of this yeah then you take a square difference of this you square them up sum yeah. it up and take yeah. the square average sum divide by the sample size and that's your variance, variance. and you square root of it you will get the standard deviation so assume in this case just for kicks right the standard deviation came out to be 2 okay if that were to be the case huh. then the first element which is 1 is that 0 0.5 standard deviation away from the mean but you know that's my my when we say this is this is these many standard deviation away away from what away from the mean away from the mean yes so in order for me to calculate this thing when the first element is one the standard deviation is two and the mean is four what i need to do is four minus one equal to three and three by two is 1.5 therefore the first element is 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean correct this that's what mean. it is okay yes this is the mean and how hmm. much far is the mean from the how much far is this value in Correct. terms of standard deviations from yes. four okay got and it. you did got exactly it. exactly that oh yes oh. sounds good Absolutely. yeah that that was my i wanted some clarity on that thank you perfect okay. and then in that code that you are using uh you used this function call called mean which one uh, any uh, the, the def d mean yeah this function uh, here you are calling this function mean m e n mean is that like a this one is that yeah. the, did you define this somewhere or is that an in, internal is, function available because of pylab star pylab ah, okay okay got it. so you got this star yeah my only my only statement here would be that every time you are calling that d mean you are calculating the mean wherein that input array is not changing so that mean could be a global what variable is the, what is the output of d mean till our return type of d mean is a list yes list of all the differences from the mean of that differences from the mean so my the my doubt was and i think i'm wrong in this like when we call d mean for the array x then is the mean of x calculated as yeah. many times as there are elements in the array or it's only calculated once it should be only once why should it be as many times as the element the four is here okay 
It's so four is one. there, all right. Four is there, all right. Uh, this is what it did. Oh, okay. Oh, no, got it. Can, can you go back to the code, Vijay? This one, this one, this vector is what ah. it calculated. Calculated. Okay. Okay. Let me let me go back. Yes. Huh. Uh. Okay, got it. Understood. Thank you. Okay, so that dot product of the vector, this is a vector. Mm -hmm. That whole thing was a vector, and the other one was yeah, vector. Yeah. So those are yeah, the variance yeah. vectors now. So right, when you have it. the dot between the variance vectors, mm -hmm. that comes out to be that you know a strong. Uh, it actually shows whether there is uh, correlation or covariance, whatever the number is, between that. And uh, this is what has been proved that this is how you calculate it. But you can go look at that uh, actual uh, equation and you will start, it will start making sense, much more sense. And I think, yeah. I think we are going to be discussing uh, much more of this because. Uh, hey, by the way, I'm uh, going to turn on my camera. This is the one assignment I did. Which is that? Uh, statistics are the truth. Yes. Ah, nice. I have read two chapters, but here is a kicker. It is a signed copy by the professor. Oh, where did you find that? Yeah. This was some like online store that I bought this used book from and turns nice. out the first page was him signing it for somebody else in 1990. Great. That should <laughs> inspire you. No wonder you're asking me such deep questions today. The next thing I think will be your book uh, signed by you that I'll show to my students. <laughs> yeah. nice. nice man, nice. Pipe nice. dreams are always good. Yeah, <laughs> nice, but no, that is real way to go. I think with that book, there'll be so much. Uh, I think now we have a signed copy of that book in our circle. So that should give us a lot of and will make my life much more difficult because that kind of questions are going to start coming to me. So I better gear up for that. <laughs> I must accept the fact, right? So anyway, anyone uh, else has a question? I think uh, Mr. Govind had a so question. just I a think... comment on the statement you had made, and I'll get out of your way after that. Okay. I uh, remember I had asked that question about import star versus you know ah, just import, ah, 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 ah. and you had mentioned that what effect does it have? Okay. It doesn't have any effect in this piece of code because this is trivial. Okay. But if you have a library, okay, with is importing something fundamental. So your Python is generally an interpreted language, so it is runtime interpretation. Hmm. So that star needs to be interpreted every time somebody imports a big library. So the parsing time increases. That's what I was reading in Reddit. So it starts playing a role if you are running ML per for you know, ah, six days, eight I days agree, training. I agree, I agree, totally agree. Unless you really require that, don't use a star. Yeah. If you require yes. only three, four, um, you know. So, uh, and if you if you are sure, no, no, that is true. If you are if you know that you require everything, just say import PyLab. Because when you are saying from PyLab import star, the okay. the parser first needs to import PyLab, then in figure out the fact that star means everything, and then load everything. So that's a three step process. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you say import, it doesn't even load that and check anything. It just it's basically equivalent of dumping a header file. Achha, achha, understood. So in, in your case, you're saying import PyLab as PP or something. Yes, right? that's it. So you actually yeah. bring the object you take the class and bring the object into the code. And then use call anything you want. Correct. Yes. And it's if you put a star means there's an intermediate step of checking something the moment you say in from PyLab import. Okay. Right, there is a module loaded which then tries to import certain sub modules or sub definitions of PyLab. Okay. So that load time gets reduced if, and it doesn't matter in such small equations, it matters when you are running like workloads which are running over days. Perfect. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. It, it makes that subtle difference, right? Not subtle. I mean, if you're running it for a long time, it will actually show up being a difference of one minute or two minutes in your calculation. Or your response typically if, if you have an MB level such library then it will start showing up if you're running it for a day then it starts showing up in hours okay okay, okay. anyway thanks thanks Rahul for that um, I, even the class would have really appreciated knowing that okay good good stuff 
I'll write it down. Anyway, it is recorded. It's good. Um, and also, uh, Govind sir, you had a question. You just unmuted and then um, uh, muted again. No, Vijay. Okay. Only thing is that uh, I think uh, when you find some time, can you record this uh, object-oriented program stuff? Yeah, we'll do that. Yes, I'll. I have that, but I wanted to get in there when it is the right time. When we okay, okay. Uh, no, when we actually give you a full capstone project for you to write, then you will be writing your own packages. Like you will be writing your own sort of uh, modules where we will actually define, tell you how to define a class, how to think like, think about this pro this project as if you would be creating classes and then pulling your own package, importing the own your own uh, you know uh, object of the class that you have created. All that we will when we do that, we'll be able to sort of give you an example of that. But you wanted a full uh, understanding of object oriented. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do yeah. that. No yeah. problem. Okay. All right. So anyone else with any question, please? Did India win or lose? I didn't even have the time to check. Going to win. Going to win, huh? Yes. Yes. Okay. When I don't see it, it wins, yeah. Seriously. Yesterday, I, the other day, I sat down and that's it. Again, this correlation may be one, but doesn't mean causality. Okay, whatever I just said. All right, all right, guys. Have a great uh, weekend or uh, then next week. Have a great week ahead, and uh, please give me that assignment this time. It's only I think uh, the best student of this class award. I think the new student which was joined, Mannat. I think she gives me the best assignments. In very well formatted. I'll even show you how neatly it is described and stuff. And of course, Bhavya is also closing on uh, that. And um, hopefully, everyone else will start following the same way. Even I think a uh, special uh, mention to Pooja also. But Pooja had a very small, pro um, taken up a very small uh, this one. But this one, please, everyone just follow through that. And uh, all, all of you make an effort now because you've learned enough. Sorry? Right? Uh, so you all make an effort to apply everything that you have learned so far. Use Matplotlib. Give me a projection. Think like a data scientist and give some analysis on it. You'll feel good. Okay. Now, when you do that, when you do that, save that IPython notebook and that becomes your portfolio. So anytime you are applying somewhere, you want to show somewhere, you show proudly that this is the analysis I made. This is the analysis I did. This is the correlation I found out. It's all nice things to do. Right? So that's the whole idea of it. Okay? With that, I will uh, say goodbye. Um, good luck for the next week. See you later. Okay? Bye bye. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye.